Hey guys, what's up? welcome to another video of mine. Come on, double A, and this is your review for the Chelsea versus Watford game on Boxing Day, where it did end 2 1 2 the Blues, and I'm very, very happy. A nice, nice three points that was desperately needed by us to basically maintain that, you know, fourth place position above Arsenal, gain a two point bridge, and also try and keep up with the likes of Man City and Spurs. So it's crucial. It's not an easy place to go to, Vicarage Road. Liverpool struggled despite winning. Man City won there as well, so it's crucial that we won there. Uh, Tottenham lost there earlier this season, so it's not an easy place to go to, but we got the three points done. Now, before I do get into the actual preview, let me, you know, go over the lineup now. There was a lot. There was a complete meltdown of the lineup on, on social media, likes of Twitter. I was, I was seeing it was incredible. No one wanted Marcus Alonso or William starting, but they both started, and the whole Twitter community went into absolute meltdown. It was incredible. Everyone was screaming for Emerson Hudson and Doyle to, to start, including myself. But to be fair to Sari, they both came on. Um, Parts of the game. Now I'll get into that in a minute. Now lineup was obviously unchanged from the the game that we lost on home to Leicester. I can see why he wants a reaction from that eleven. He didn't really get it. It was a very slow, lethargic start. It was an identical start to Leicester. And I'm thinking, here we go again. It's not good enough. Now uh, we weren't playing well whatsoever. I mean, it wasn't a terrible performance. There were a couple of players that were really well. I thought Kovacic had a fantastic game as well as Kante doing his job really well. I thought Aspilicueta was really, really solid. For Marcus Alonso was a bit shaky at times. Again, was getting ripped a few times. Was you know it was reminiscent of Leicester. And I was thinking, here we go again. We're gonna get you know countered. We're gonna concede. But then right on half time, on a stroke of half time. Hazard scores a beauty, Kovacic wins the ball back, dispossesses a player at the halfway line, sends a through ball to Hazard, Hazard then rounds Foster, puts into the empty net and joins the 100 club and scores the 100th goal for Chelsea Football Club and he's basically confirmed a legend, he's put himself up there but he did not stop there. Now right before then the half you're thinking it's half time, we're up 1-0. Pereira scores an absolute beauty, a corner comes in, it's not dealt well by Rüdiger whatsoever, really, really poor defending, and Pereira, to be fair, it was undefendable, volleys it and it goes in, absolute worldy, 1-1 one, one at half time, the worst time ever to concede, then the second half begins, and it was more of Watford, it was Watford on the front foot, and when our goal came, our penalty, it was completely against the runner play in my opinion, Watford were pressurising us, we kept losing the ball, we couldn't string two passes, and I was, I was thinking Watford might get the winner here, this is this is terrible, it wasn't a good team performance, it was an okay team performance, but Hazard bailed us out once again, I'm telling you, when Hazard has a poor game, the team cannot do anything, the team cannot create anything, Hazard won on this game, and immediately we won the game. Now Hazard, basically three balls play through, Hazard then basically pass, sends it past Foster, Foster clatters into him, a clear penalty, Hazard sends Foster the wrong way from the spot, makes it 2-1 and take, basically gets us all three points, scores his 101st goal for Chelsea and from then on it was really good defending from us to be fair, we played much better, Callum hudson Doy came on for that injured Pedro and it's fantastic to see. He didn't really have much of an impact, but he was running down the channels. He was holding the ball up well. Good link-up play. Um, he made a couple of mistakes, but it's normal for his age, his inexperience. But then he was sobbed off oddly. Now, a lot of fans once again went to meltdown. But the commentator did confirm that he was clutching his left knee a few times. So, he was officially injured. So, fans that are do watching this, please calm down. He was injured. Um, there was a reason why Sarri did this. And Emerson had to come on for him. Emerson was really, really nice to see Emerson play. Uh, Mark Alonso was playing on the same pitch as him, but I want to see Emerson replace Alonso. Alonso, I'm not confident. He wasn't that great. He was much better than Leicester, but still not good enough. He's still not press resistant. Every time he gets pressurised, I'm quite nervous. Um, Kepa was okay. He can't do it. He can't blame for the goal. It was a wonder strike from Pereira. But an overall, a decent performance. Not a great performance, but a decent performance. Hazard once again bailed us out. When I saw on Twitter, someone put it perfectly correct. We have an average squad with one world-class player who elevates us completely. When Hazard does not play well, the team capitulates mentally. Hazard was not 100%, couldn't score against Leicester. Immediately, we capitulate. Same against Wolves. And um, he had a good game today. Scored a brace. Um, tenth goal of the Premier League season. Twelfth goal in total. Uh, 12 goals in total and immediately the team plays much better. I thought William had a much better game but I still want hudson Odoi starting. Hazard was at the force nine once again. Jorginho was much better, was dictating play, was orchestrating it, was controlling it like he normally does. So the perfect register role, so fair play to him. Really good, was a bit shaky at times. He wasn't winning the aerial jewels. Now I made this point on Twitter, I've also said in the past, 
Rudiger, he seems really tall and big, but when it comes to aerial battles, he kept losing him against Dini. He kept losing it time and time again. He's very good on the ground. He's very good at slide tackling, commanding his box. Really, really good commanding centre back who does nice stand tackles, etc. Really, really nice pace. Like I said, nice commanding, you know, uh, centre back. However, when it comes to aerially, you'll be surprised. He's very tall. You'd think he'd win all the aerial balls, but he doesn't surprisingly, and it cost us from the uh, Pereira goal. Now, Luis was really, really good. Obviously, there was one opportunity where Pereira was clean through, and Luis buys him out of the way, defends it really, really well, keeps his composure, stays calm, and defends really, really well. Uh, a lot of the times, I believe Luis gets um, uncalled stick. Um, there are times where he can improve on, but I thought he had a really, really good game, and I think. You know, there was probably half the team played really well and the other half were probably just average. Um, but the main thing is we got the three points. Man City dropped points, so we gained three points on them. Um, so that was really, really, really important. We, you know, we're only four points behind City now. So that's really, really crucial. The three points is uh, is ours. The job is done. We are still in fourth. We've now created a two-point bridge gap from Arsenal. And we move on to our next game against Crystal Palace on Sunday. If you did enjoy this review, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.